The last thing we have to do for our regression analysis is make a graph. And graphs are great because they really show the relationship between two variables. Unfortunately, we've got to do a little data manipulation in order to make this graph work. And I'm going to start two columns. My first column is going to be the x column. And remember, that's the independent. And my second column is going to be the y column, or the dependent. And since I was using weight to predict cost, I'm going to just highlight my weight column. And please be sure you do grab all the data points. It's easy to miss some, especially if they continue down off the screen. And I'm going to paste that underneath my X label. And I'm going to do the same for the Y column. And we do need them to be right next to each other, X first, then Y, in order for the graph to be easily made. And it's much easier just to, just to copy and paste than to worry about trying to do all the other manipulation. Now, I am going to highlight all of the data, including the labels. And then I'm going to insert a graph, and it's going to be a scatter plot. I'm going to choose this very first option right here, scatter plot. And up here comes a great graph. I'm just going to edit a few things. First thing I'm going to do is do cost versus weight, because I did put the weight on the bottom. And I do want some labels on the axes to indicate what they stand for. So first thing I'm going to do is add some labels in the Layout tab. I'm going to add an axes label. I'll do the horizontal one first. I want it to just, you could choose the very first option below. On the x-axis is the weight, so I'm going to remove that and type in weight. And you might want to be specific and say it's in pounds. And then I'm going to do the same thing, axis title on the vertical axis, or the y1. Most often we do the first one, the rotated title. And you can also type in the formula bar if you want, cost, and this is in dollars. Now I have a great graph. I just want to do one thing, and that's add a trend line. And that trend line shows the linear trend. And if you look in my Layout tab, which I've already in, there's a button right over here in Analysis that says Trend Line. And right now the little none bar has the X in it. And I just want to go down and choose the linear trend line. There it is. Now if you'd like the equation for it, you can make it um, you can make it give you the equation, and I can go to oh let's do format the trend line. I gotta grab the trend line more trend line options, and you could say you want to display the equation, you want to display the r squared values. Whatever you want. Just be aware, your equation is going to look backwards of the equation we set up. We set up the 103.5 first, and then the 1.067. As long as the numbers are the same, it's okay. It's just because addition is um, commutative, which means order doesn't matter when we're adding. Excel sets it up with the x variable first, and then the constant. In statistics, we generally usually set it up the other way. Now just one other thing I want to show you, help you out for your project, is because it does ask you to organize all your data. It asks you to present the intercepts, the coefficients, the r-squared values, the linear regression line equation. And I have set up a nice little table. If you download the Unit 5 Hints, which is where you also find screenshots of how to do all this, um, you'll see this nice little table here independent variable, intrinsic, extrinsic, overall, because remember we are doing this three times, and you are welcome to copy and paste this table, I'm going to throw it in right through the regression analysis from before, and just fill in the values. What is the slope? That's the number with the x, or the second row. What's the y-intercept? That's the one that's labeled intercept. What's the equation? And remember how I wrote that equation out. And you will not be marked off if you write it 1.07x plus 103.5, as long as your x must go with your variable or the second number down. As long as the x is stuck to the right number, you're going to be fine. And the r-squared value you found from the upper part of the analysis. So that's a nice way to organize it. That can go right in your chart. And like I said, you're welcome to copy and paste that, that chart from the Unit 5 Hints. If you have trouble finding the Unit 5 Hints, please just let me know, and 
I'll make sure that you can get your hands on that.